Joey, I got a question for you. All right. I'm shoot. If you had to recommend one TV show to a perfect stranger, you have to, right? No other okay. option. I'm forced. Okay. And they would have to love it. Otherwise, they would kill you. What show? Oof. What would what would be the guaranteed show that you know that they would love and put your life on the line for it? Man, I, I'll tell you, my, my go-to is The Office. But I will say it puts me at risk because <laughs> the first time I saw The Office, I did not like it. Like the first episode I watched with some friends and I was like, I don't understand why they like this show. I don't want to, you know, make them feel bad, but this was terrible. And then the more I watched it, the more I liked it. It was kind of like beer. It was like an acquired taste or something. Mm. Um, so I may be dead by the time the guy likes the show, though. What about you? What's yours? Andy Griffith. Yeah. I, I think you're probably safer than I am on that deal. I mean, who can't like... Barney Five. It, he makes the show for sure. I mean, this this is a classic. I I will watch Andy Griffin anytime at eleven p.m. at night that it comes on. <laughs> now, why why are you asking me this question though? Well, that that was as you know, even though you and I were not in the same group, that was the icebreaker question within our Club Two Hundred meeting that we just had our mastermind group. That's right. Yeah, that's uh, one of the standard meetings that we have within our, our mastermind that's just focused around networking and allowing people to continue to grow deeper in those relationships. So, yeah, this is a I thought it was a great call. Everybody walked away from it feeling like they're connected and it's good because we're all in different areas of the country. So to be able to, to have that is super good. Well, I, that was just the lead into ultimately two other questions, which I think is kind of a great tie in today's podcast is we're asking our coaches what's working with them. Like what's the quarterly update? Where are they at on their journey to financial freedom? And the other two questions we asked within our mastermind groups, our individual like small groups as we broke out was what's working for you? What's not? And where are you stuck? And I, I think today's conversation is we were able to ask JD and Mark, what were some of the things that was working, that wasn't working, what's on the horizon, gave great insight into the things that they're doing and how they're leading from the front. Yeah, and I love the fact that these coaches have different personalities than you and I, right? So you hear us every single week or every single month, rather, share our passive income ideas, what we're doing, the things we're learning. But we probably steer away from some of the things that both JD and Mark brought up today just because they don't really fit our investor DNA as well. And so I think it gives a broader scope of where success can be. And maybe it's going to be that thing that helps you to take the action step to get to financial freedom. Cause you're like, wait a minute, I definitely resonate with what Mark said there or what JD said. And so anyways, I'm, I'm really grateful that we, we had this quarterly update and hopefully we're going to do it every quarter. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. All right, well, yeah. let's not steal any more time from it. Let's get to the round table and belly up. Yeah. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Muray. Welcome into the Financial Freedom Roundtable, where each week we break down complex financial topics so that you can more easily understand them, and more importantly, take action on your path to becoming financially free. If this is your first time, welcome. Grateful to have you in the room. My name is Russ Morgan. They call me the idea guy, mostly because lack of follow through guy or bat internet guy didn't sound as cool to me, but enough about me. Let me introduce you to my co-host, the Italian stallion. He's got the license plate cover to prove it. Mr. Joey Murray stallion. Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon to you, Russ. Thank you. Uh, thank you for another week of the roundtable. This is going to be awesome. Man, today is not about you and I. It is That's about right. the coaches. It's about hearing how they are getting to financial freedom for themselves. By the way, you guys hear Russ and I talk about what we're doing every single month. It's time. It is that time to bring the coaches into full vision. What are they doing? What's going on with them? What's working? What's not? And uh, what what the future looks like for them? Well, it, we have a goal this year for the for the community for a hundred people to be able to fire their bosses. Correct? That's right. And so to me, this is the opportunity to highlight some some of our coaches and what they're doing just to be inspiration. As you said, Joey, we share our passive income report every single month. This is a chance for the coaches to be able to share theirs. And I'm excited because I, I know some of the stuff they're doing. I know one of the coaches has taken it all the way to firing his boss. And he, he's leading from the front, which I enjoy that. So uh, enough about you and me, man. Let's get to them. Let's Let's get over to my left. I got the man that I like to call Mr. Incredible, his superpower is speed to financial freedom. And the, be the real beauty to that speed is it's contagious. My man, J.D. Hill, say hello to your fans, J.D. Hello, fans. Uh, Russell, I, I will tell you, um, this is going to be a lot of fun because uh, as coaches, we never get a chance to talk about the things that we're doing. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to, to share uh, with the community, uh, what Mark and I have, have been up to and what we're doing and, and the, the results that we're getting by following what we're teaching. Right. And, uh, so this is, this is going to be an exciting, uh, an exciting show for sure. Well, you guys are so humble. You you're great listeners. You're always looking for ways to help those in what you're talking to and you don't share as often. And I think this is a great time to highlight just some of the things that you're doing. So I'm super excited to share that. So let's get over to the man, the retiree of the group, the guy who actually has fired his boss, Mr. Catch Me If You Can, when he's not killing bears with his bare hands or spear diving for tuna, he's dropping gold nuggets on us right here. The one and only Mark Haraguchi. Welcome, Mark. Good afternoon. <clears throat> this is going to be a fun one. This, this is nice because this this is going to be a little bit of uh, an opportunity to share some proof of concept with everyone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does it really work? Right? Like there's times when people look at our, our reports and they ask us, I guess that one didn't work out the whole hundred unicorns thing, huh, Joe? What, what can we, can we move off of the hundred unicorn? Like, why do we have to bring those guys up? I they, mean, they, I know we, we shot them or, or the cows. Hey, thanks for the uh, iron city cattle idea, Joe. Yeah. Oh, that was my idea. Okay. Okay. Was it mine? It, it really was. It was. It was. I'm, I mean, you're right. So I'm moving Anything on. Anything that has to do with animals, never again. That's basically, that, that's the so what of that, that statement. That's the takeaway. No, no more, more animals. animals. All right. Well, I, the, I know there's lots of challenges, lots of successes. So I want to dive right into to this. So I, I think that there's three points we want to cover today. What's working, what's not, and what's on the horizon. So first, let me let me get over here to to Mark. Tell me a little bit about what's working right now for you. Right now, I just about everything is firing on all on all cylinders. Um, I we've mentioned before, you know, I've I've got long term rentals. Um, I have uh, ATM machines. I do some hard money lending. Uh, I also have just started uh, short term rentals, um, turnkey, right? Because my my investor DNA is a logical C which the C really means can't see myself doing that. Um, <laughs> so I need to find someone else to do it for me to do the managing. So like this, turn, turn, turnkey long-term rental, so turnkey short-term rental. Um, so you, you're, you're still applying that see your way out of it process. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> um, so, so that's actually going really good. And, you know, to, to just put some, uh, again, proof of concept, right? Um, I do some lending with, 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 a, with a very good friend who does land flipping. Mm -hmm. And another one of those uh, parcels came to the finish line. And so, boom, I got the, the loan back and then we divvied up the profit. So it's working. And so that, that's, what's, that's what's really cool about it. How about for you, JD? What's working on your end? Look, this is of no surprise to anyone. What's working for me are pet fees, <laughs> pet fees, and pet fees. Okay. <laughs> Uh, those are working wonderfully, uh, right now. No, seriously, the, the, the short-term rentals is actually working really, really well. And I know I've, I've made comments about how I don't particularly 
enjoy them necessarily, but you know, I was looking at, um, our numbers from, from last year for our tiny little one bed, one bath duplex. Um, we grossed $54,000 last year. And, um, I, I know it's, it, that is an actual <laughs> unicorn, by the way, that's, that's working. I get it. But I looked at that and I'm like, okay, JD, I, I, you, you don't like this. I get it. You don't want to manage it. So you need to put somebody in place here to manage us for you because you've got to add more. And so we're actually expanding and we're taking over the unit next door to us so that we can add more pet fees to our bottom line. So uh, <laughs> really, really, really excited about that. You got to basically like a dog park, a bark park after, at, behind that place from this point <laughs> yeah, forward. We sh- oh, I didn't even think about that because it's a shared backyard. We could make it actually a little mini dog park. I love that idea. So, I mean, um, come on, like how many people go to an Airbnb and actually ever go in the backyard? I've never been in the backyard. I mean, other than like, what's in the backyard? Okay. I'm back inside. Yeah, right. Yeah. So dog park that thing. I love you, that. And if you've got kids, you'd go to the backyard, like yeah. little kids. They're, yeah. they're running around. I yeah. got kids. I got, oh. I got, we all got kids except yeah, we got kids. Well, my um, kids play outside. That's all I'm saying. At the and Airbnb that you go to. Yeah. <laughs> The, the other thing that's also been working is our fix and flip business. Um, so we finally took, don't you put that down. This is great. We finally took our first distribution from our fix and flip business and uh, in January. And um, there's finally some, some, some cash flow that we're taking from that, that we're now putting into other passive income investments. So we've got a few things that are going well. All right. So I want to go back to Mark real quick. You mentioned something a second ago that is, is new to us, which is turnkey short-term rentals. I, we, we've we've had Spartan Invest, uh, Memphis Invest, uh, Mid South Home Buyers. I think we've had a, several different groups over the years on our podcast talking about how to buy single family homes, put a management company in place, and rent it long term. Now you're talking about short term rentals. That's different. Tell me about that real quick. It's extremely similar, but not. So. <laughs> The, the level of participation is, is on par. So this, this is a group that, you know, hey, again, if, if we're going to talk about what's the value of community, what's the value of the inner circle, what's the value of Wealth Without Wall Street, I was introduced to this from a client. As we're going through the process of, of getting him set up and, and we're both sharing ideas, hey, what are you doing? What's working? What's not working? He shared his idea of what he had found in a turnkey short-term rental. And I'm like, wow, that's really fascinating because I know that my DNA won't allow me to do a short-term rental myself. So it's, it's, a, it's a company and there are many more of these starting to pop up all over the place gang. And what they're doing is they're going and sourcing locations. So they're leveraging their understanding of markets, um, head to bed ratios, places where they see strategic opportunities. They go in, they look around, they find the places that would have the amenities and the location for a specific demographic. They then negotiate. So for example, there's one in San Antonio, I'm in. They're negotiating with the um, apartment complex. So they're going in with economy of scale, right? It's not JD rolling in saying, can I get one of your units? It's not Russ going in and say, can I, can I get two? These guys are going in and saying, we want like 20 or 30 of these things. So now you're getting scale and now you have a place where they're going to have a cleaning crew. That cleaning crew is going to be set up for that specific spot. So they've got everything from start to finish. They find the place, they source the place, they do the furnishings, they set it all up, they do the management, they collect all the fees, and then they push it out to you. Now, is it stress-free? No, um, there's still some growing pains. There's still some learning curve. There's still things you still have to be an active participant in your passive income. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I haven't found the one that is 100% passive. And if so, you do, it, explain to me what that, I mean, obviously I know that's kind of point number two, what's not working. So maybe this isn't it, but tell me what is the headache in that specific thing? I'm just curious. Maybe it's just my personal interest. Joey and I have talked about, you know, starting the same sort of turnkey short-term rental process for investors ourselves, right? Because we've seen it, we've operated now, we're at 27 units, I believe. And we, we see all the opportunity to take this and go do it in other cities. What's the headache? What are you seeing from the investor side? Because I wanna make sure that I'm learning out of this. From the investor style, it's, it's matching up the expectation of what the pro forma was, what the, the the illustrations were showing versus what's actually happening. 
and there's always going to be some technical glitches, right? You're using a dashboard, you're, you're, you're trying to get in there and, and you're trying to see what's going on. But overall, the communication works. And if you see an issue, you address it. And within a reasonable period of time, they're already on the issue. So there's, I, I don't care what you do. There, there's always going to be little challenges here and there. But overall, for what I'm trying to do, it fits into the puzzle of where I'm trying to get to. Yeah, I love it. All right. So, so JD, you talked about your fix and flip business. Yeah. I, I got a couple of questions for you on that. You good? You ask me anything. Yeah. All right. So I was, we were, we were talking to somebody, Joey, and I, I, I've forgotten who it was, but it was in the fix and flip space. And I was saying, obviously the real estate market's really interesting, not, not knowing where we are. When's, when is it time to be in the real estate fix and flip world and when it's not? And their answer to me or to us, Joey, was fix and flip is good when the real estate market is going up or it's staying level. When it's not working is when it's going down, right? So obviously you have a fix and flip business. You must be bullish or at least feeling the real estate market's going to stay level. Is that what your is that what your prediction is right now? Yeah, you know that's it's interesting. Um, I I know our market really well because I live in it and I I get to experience it all the time, so I can speak specific to where I live and what the data says. And one of the things that's interesting is there is an in, immense amount of institutional money that is being flooded into the marketplace right now. BlackRock. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. BlackRock, Zillow, right. Zillow. Open door, you right. know, there are hedge funds galore that are buying single family rentals that Mark is escaping and they're buying them at volume. <laughs> mm. And so for us, our model is, is a little unique. Um, we're doing some renovations on, on some of our properties and some of it we're selling off to, to hedge funds as well. And, um, we haven't seen any real pullback or slowdown on any of those types of things. So we're still bullish that right now we want to continue to take advantage of every opportunity that's right in front of us. But what we've also learned as well, and where the real value is, at least from our perspective, is actually in the dirt. And so that's given us some, some perspective on buying dirt and subdividing it into lots for people to build houses on. You know, I live in Texas and uh, Texas is a massive state. And so we are very fortunate that we have a lot of dirt to build on. And, um, um, people are actively looking for ways to buy land that they can build houses on. Uh, and so that's something else that we've also been adding into what we're doing is buying land, subdividing it, and then selling off the lots. Oh, I, well, I love dirt, right? I mean, dirt rich is, you know, one of my favorite books, Mark Podolsky. I mean, the guy, I mean, right now the, the guy's living, living his best life. I mean, yeah, he is. I, I, I love seeing the the benefits out of being in that in that space so here, here's a question though and I, I can't remember joey if you can remember our our previous guest's name please spit it out i, I want to give him credit for what we're talking about here but one of the things that he said he had done a couple hundred flips and he said the biggest mistake that he made when he was flipping homes was that he sold them it was jay scott jay scott yes so have you considered not selling them all or at least not selling a hundred percent of the house, right? Like, so maybe have you considered the option of finding a, a side investor who wanted to buy the property and put uh, tenants in it and you sold them 90% of it, you know, and kept 10% of it to participate in the, in not only the appreciation game, but also the cash flow game. Yet we have, and um, I, I will tell you, I am not a landlord. Uh, that is not a game that I want to get into personally. Uh, I know a number of folks that fix and flip, and they'll buy five and keep one, right? And that's kind of their 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 um, their their motto or their model, if you will. Is they buy five, keep one, buy five, keep one, because they want to build the cash flow game. And and for us, we just we don't want to be in that space. If I'm going to do it, we're going to do it on a short term rental side, uh, not on the long term rental side. And uh, so, so again, we, we have considered those types of things, but right now with where home values are going and with rental rates, um, particularly in Texas, because we do have property taxes, uh, it's, it's hard to be really, really profitable on the long-term rental side because of property taxes. All right. Perfect. This podcast is amazing. Almost too amazing, Russ. There's too many ideas 
and I don't know where to get started creating passive income. Well, here's the thing, Joey. I think one of the things you need to consider in that statement is what is it costing you to not know? What is it costing you not to take action? I love the statement that says you don't have to be great to start. You just have to start to be great. If you're struggling on where to start, you have to know what type of investor you are. Know your investor DNA. And if you want to learn more about this, you can join us in our Passport Challenge at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport. Get started today. All right. Well, let's talk about what's not working. Coming back to you, Mark. Tell, tell me what's not working right now. Oh, man. So this one's been a long time coming. It's been about three or four years or so, I think. Three, no, two or three years. Uh, got into a burr. Uh, property was, you know, going going through some uh, connection uh, groups, finding, you know, people that were uh, doing turnkeys or burrs and and pulled pulled the trigger on a burr out of an East Coast place. And it's just been, I mean, there's so many colorful words I could use right now, but this is a family <laughs> podcast that I'll, I'll refrain from that. Um, so it's in the, uh, I'd say we're in the, uh, the bottom of the ninth inning in terms of the lawsuit. And the court date is the first week of March. COVID gave these guys a two year stay of execution from actually having to go to court. And all I asked for was my money back. So it was a burr, you were supposed to buy it cheap. They were supposed to do a bunch of work to it and then put tenants in place and have a rent guarantee. Well, I purchased, but they never did any work. They never put tenants in place. And all the while when questions were coming in, yep, yep, work's all done. Yep, yep, tenants in place. I said, great, great, great. Where's the rent check? Crickets. <laughs> so when you finally wow. go and you figure it out, you actually find out the city, the, the, the city of this area has actually put a lien against the property because the property is derelict and uninhabitable, which goes against the, the city codes. So I'm about ready to be pulled into a lawsuit in that city because, quote, I bought the property. But thankfully, I found a lawyer who uh, is actually pretty good in that area, and he got me, number one, out of the uh, receivership with the city, got me out of that, got about 80% of my money back from getting out of the deal, got all the paperwork pushed around so that I'm not in any way, shape, or form in dereliction of duty in the eyes of that city. But now we're at the finish line trying to get the last bit of money back. So really quickly, wow. for those who don't know the term burr, explain that to us. Uh, buy, renovate, uh, I get lost in the R's. Buy, reno, rehab, rent, refi, redo, rinse, repeat, uh, rerun. <laughs> <laughs> Run around, lots it of, sounds like. <laughs> lots of R's. <laughs> Repo. <laughs> Looks, it sounds like you get a lot of things in there. Okay, I just didn't want anybody to miss, you know, that acronym. I know that's a common real estate term, but it's even in those who know what it is, don't necessarily know all the R's, right? So that's a. But a, may, important. let me make sure I understood, Mark. This was like you could do a burr on any property in your local, like where you live. You could go and purchase it yourself. You could re, you could rehab it. Then you can get a renter in and then refinance it. In this case, you were expecting this to be like almost like a turnkey burr where they were going to do all of those operations, correct? Yeah. So you're you're not in present locally. They're saying they're doing all this. They do none of it. And that's the issue that we're facing. It's not that the burr was a bad strategy. It was the operator that you trusted to follow through on it. That is correct. Got mm -hmm. it. So JD, could I hire you to be my burr master? Uh, you can't afford me. <laughs> exactly you absolutely could yes yes um because again that's what we're doing right in a sense we're just not doing the the, the rehab or the renovation part but you, you buy it at a discount you know you renovate it add value to get it back up to to comps whatever the the market you know uh value is of, of homes in that area you put a renter in it for six months and you refinance get all your cash out hopefully and then you just repeat i, I know uh, i'm about to state the obvious i'm confused you just said that you don't rehab. I thought that you were in the fix and flip world. We we do some rehabs, um, but I, like I said, a lot. So you're of just stuff in the flip world. We're in the, the right now. We're world. in the flip world. So let's so look to put it into context, right? So in 2019, which is when we started, we flipped one house. 2020, we did six. Last year, we did 45, and this year we're on pace to do over 200. And what we've figured out is a really neat niche 
especially in our area, uh, on buyers that are actively wanting to buy single family rentals. And we've just figured out their buy box. And so we're just buying these houses and selling them right to an end buyer within 30 days of taking um, title to the property. I mean, in essence, you're just wholesaling properties. We just have to own it first. But yes, yeah. we're basically another wholesaler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I love it. All right. So clearly that's working. What's not working? <sighs> What's not working? Um, I got involved in a, uh, a crypto investment. And uh, within, no, not yours. No, no, no. That That's actually been wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's about to say, what are you talking about? No, those have been great. This was something different. And and here's my thing. I'll just, full disclosure, disclaimer here. Every crypto investment that I've made has been with zero research done on my part. <laughs> zero. I, I, cause I, don't, I haven't had the time. So I've just trusted people to give me good advice. And knowing that obviously it's it's on me if it doesn't go well. Uh, so I don't blame anybody, but I, I made a crypto investment. I'd heard one person bring it up and then another person brought it up and I'm like, Oh, I respect both of these people I'm in. And, uh, within a matter of probably 60 days, we've lost like 78% uh, of our investment. It's is this been, the, is this the one thing that I was on a call with you about? And you were like, this is absolutely what I'm doing. I'm like, I don't know about this thing. Yes. Yes. Cause here's the deal. Here's the deal. I could have either like 10,000 X my return. Right. Or I could have lost it all. I was expecting though, if I was going to lose it all, it was going to take more than 60 days. Let's just be honest. I wasn't <laughs> expecting it to happen so quick. And I essentially got into a Ponzi scheme. And, um, and so I'm still trying to figure out how to actually get what's left of, of my money out of that, that, that deal. So, Hey, look, I, I I've done the same thing, but I just, it, it was a casino and I, I knew what I was walking into. I just, I well, didn't, I didn't pretend. And if you look at our, our, uh, you know, um, hierarchy of wealth, the money that I put in there is at the top of the, the pyramid. I mean, it's money that I could afford to lose. It's like, I didn't put, you know, gobs and gobs and gobs of money in there. It was money that I could afford to lose. And if I lost it, you know, it's, I'll take it on the chain and we'll just keep moving. It wasn't with money that I could not afford to lose. Well, then let's be clear. Your strategy in this, was it a speculation, like an appreciation accumulation kind of strategy Buy low, so high? Yeah, the strategy was um, basically you put money in and at the end of 365 days, that investment was going to turn into a multiple seven figure return, um, which on the surface sounds too good to be true. And it absolutely was. <laughs> it oh absolutely my was. But, but in, just to be clear, we're talking about passive income. Yeah. And that was not a cash flow play. It was, it was, well, it would have been in 365 days, but in terms of, <laughs> you know, immediately drawing income off of it. No, there was, there was not a cash flow play. No, immediately. Um, no, this, immediately. No. I've heard all this, I needed to hear. This is, no. this is the, I mean, Hey, look I, the first rental property I ever bought a guy came to me and said, man, I got a, I got a deal for you. I bought, I bought this apartment complex. We rent a, uh, we renovated the whole complex. We turned them into condos. We've sold all of them. I'm like, well, what are you talking to me about? He goes, well, one of the guys that we sold him to actually just went through bankruptcy and I, we just got the property back, right? Like he, he couldn't do anything. We closed, it came back to us. He said, we sold all of them at a hundred to $115,000 a piece. He's like, I just want to get my money out of this deal on this one. Cause I've already got other properties in there. Are you interested? I was like, well, tell me more. He said, I already got a renter in the property for you. It cash flows. I didn't even know what that term meant at the time, by the way. <laughs> it cash flows, and I'll give it to you at eighty-five thousand. There's appraisals in here for one hundred and twenty thousand. He's like, if I was you, I'd just hold it for two years, so that way you can, you know, avoid some of the uh, ordinary income on it, and, and sell it for capital gains. He's like. You're going to, you're going to make a fortune, man. I'm doing you a favor. Like, I'm like, this sounds brilliant. Yeah. Let's do it. Where do I sign me up? Right. It's like Christmas over here. This is in July of 2007. <laughs> well, you, you know, the year goes by at the end of March or April, whatever it's college town school lets out. They, they can't find another renter to the property. The market crashes. That's, the town ended up, you know, building 500 units or a thousand units down there and forcing all the freshmen to move into them. So my unit sat empty for 12 months and was worth 60,000. <laughs> so 
So, but the point is, is that I like to your point, Stallion, I was in it for the appreciation. I was in it for, oh, I'm gonna buy for 85, it's worth 120. Right, like the speculation. The, the the smart guy in the room should have bought it, turned around and put it on the market for a hundred to another sucker who I could have told them the same story. Look, it's worth one hundred twenty. I just want to do you a deal. Right? I'll sell this thing. I, I mean, come on, it's cash flowing, which was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> they had they had a renter, but what they didn't have was positive cash flow when you pay the management fee, you pay the insurance, you pay the property taxes, not the to mention- was flowing. The, it was just flowing out of your pocket. Yeah. You yes. know what else was flowing in that apartment complex? The water. I had a surpro bill almost every year. <laughs> I mean, so anyway, I, I'm with you, JD. I understand you get sucked in. You're like, man, this is my opportunity. Well, yeah, that's just one thing that's not, that, that didn't go well. I mean, and here's the thing, right? It's like, if, and, and we've talked about this before, is that if you don't go, you, you, you're not going to have success or failure. And I've been fortunate because of being involved with this community. And I'll tell you, since joining Wealth Without Wall Street, I've created more than 100% in, in, in passive income to my monthly expenses in a very short period of time Be because of the things that we teach, Right. And, and, but I've made mistakes along the way, like this crypto one, like trying to get into the e-com space and doing turnkey e-com that ended up being shut down. And, you know, like, so it's like, I've taken some on the chin, but, but I've learned so much from that and where to focus my energy and, and, and going forward. All right. Well, All right. let's, let's get to the horizon. I want to, I want to hear about what's coming next. Mark, tell me what's, What's new for you? What, what are you thinking? What are you looking forward to? Well, so for those of you that are uh, active in the community um, and for those of you that were uh, kind enough to share some ideas, I posted in there. I said, hey, look, here's a here's a scenario for you. I got two properties in Illinois, bought them for 125. It's been about six or seven years now. They're worth about 220, 200. I'm like, what would you do? And the cash flow is about five to 700 bucks a month. And so it was great feedback from everybody. Um, always nice to hear other opinions and ideas. So I've actually decided after speaking to some other people too, um, creating some other strategies for it, I'm going to go ahead and sell those properties. I will take the capital gain hit, but I'm already targeting moving those funds into some syndication deals because number one, not only can I move the, the money out of those, those properties, because I'm, I'm kind of done with that area. It's been a fun run. It's been good, but I'm gonna move it out, take the bag of cash while I can put it into something else, not only get the cash flow from that other opportunity, but get the uh, accelerated depreciation to offset some of those capital. Now, sorry, what I should have said first is I am not a qualified tax professional, CPA, <laughs> nor is this in any way, shape or form tax advice. And it should never, ever, ever be construed as anything other than Mark's own uh, silly hypothesis of what might work. Um, so that's what I'm going to do and free liberate those dollars out of those two units because they're kind of stuck in there, get them out, get it into something else. It's got cash flow, it's got upside appreciation, and it also has a tax benefit structure to mitigate what is coming down the pipe for me. So that's actually what I'm really excited about is kind of starting to deleverage some of the other assets, which were kind of like the training wheels, um, the, you know, the, the, the beater car that got you through college and got you through the beginning. Well, now it's time to trade it in and now move it on to a different class. Well, but just so I know, what sort of syndications are you most interested in? I really like um, the storage space. I really like self-storage, um, whether the economy is going up, economy is going sideways, or the economy is going down. Um, if you haven't been into a brand new home build lately, there is virtually no storage in that house. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and people don't want to get rid of stuff. And you know what? If, if, if there's an economic downturn, people are going to downsize. They don't want to just jettison everything, so they'll go put it in a storage unit. People upsize, they get into a new house, maybe they want to hang on to some of the other things, boom, they throw it into storage. Um, so I really like the storage space. Cool. How about you, JD? What's on the horizon? Uh, man, um, Russ, I feel like I'm a lot like you. Uh, and, I, and, and maybe Joey as well, but I feel like Joey's a little more disciplined and focused. Uh, I get shiny object syndrome. And, uh, and so, you know, we're going to start actually getting more and more into the land stuff. 
uh, and buying uh, larger parcels of land and subdividing those. That's on the horizon for us, which we're really, really excited about. In addition to um, getting into some of the, the commercial and multifamily space uh, as well. So those are some of the, the two bigger projects that we're really focusing on right now is getting more into the land space uh, in addition to some, some multifamily stuff, whether that's ground up development, um, or initiate the process of developing and then selling it off to, to someone else. Um, but, uh, that's, that's what we're, uh, is on the horizon for us. So not, not going at it from the case of the, like buying into an existing syndication, you're talking about being on the front end of those projects. That's right. Either, either as the operator or as the person raising the capital and syndicating the deal. Yeah. Very cool. Stallion, how about for you? I want, I want to hear Horizon for you. What, do, what are you excited about right now that we have not invested in, that we potentially might invest in, and you better not steal my idea? <laughs> how did you know I was going to do that? Um, I, you know, to me, I think I would love to pour more into our land business. I think it is just, it's just solid. It's just easy. And it is, it's just constantly... Uh, there's not a whole lot of variation and I like those things about it. Um, whereas like from a short-term rental st- perspective, it can be, it can vary. And, um, and I like, I like the same of uh, the business because it has much more upside, um, in the here and now, and it's quicker to get there. Um, the only other thing I say is if we found a great opportunity to mimic what we're going to the passive income mastermind this year, um, in May, is at a boutique kind of hotel space that's a short-term rental. It's not a hotel, but it's not a short-term rental. It's kind of like this mixture of the two. And it's super flexible in the sense that there's certain units within it that can be rented individually, or you can rent the whole space altogether. There's an event meeting area. There's a rooftop area. I mean, the thing is just amazing. And uh, Mark just said it very well. He he called it a short tell. I love that. Um, If we could find a similar venue here in Birmingham, I would be all over that because I think it just, it, it meets the future um, of the, of the industry, in my opinion, and where we're headed. If you're an accredited investor and you're interested in creating passive income streams that exceed your monthly expenses by at least two times, 200%. I, I'm encouraging you right now to go to wealthspotwallstreet.com, club 200, forward slash club 200. And we are having an event, as Joey, you were just referencing the hotel that we're going to be staying at in May. It's going to be in Austin, Texas. We're going to have 60 of our closest friends there. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'd love to, to see if that would be a good fit for you. So go to there. If you're an accredited investor, go to wealthspotwallstreet.com, forward slash club 200. All right, I, Joey, I am excited about RV parks. You, you've exposed me to the RV game, and I, I've heard and seen the opportunity of cash flow, when it, whether it's golf carts or wibbits or you name it. And I don't, do you know what a wibbit is, by the way, J.D.? Excuse me? Not a whippet, a wibbit. <laughs> uh, I am from Texas, so no. No, I do not. So Wibbits are these like floating water parks. And we were talking to a guy who's going to be speaking to us in our Passive Income Mastermind next month. He, every park that they have, they put on water and they buy these Wibbits and it's, they basically rent them out by the hour to families that they can use. He says, we make a thousand dollars an hour during the summer on these things. It is amazing. They, they have uh, apple cannons. An apple can, he said, we'll spend three to $400 for two apple cannons. And over the course of the summer, we would make $50,000. These apple cannons will shoot apples like 300 yards. I mean, like, and people will, people will pay to shoot an apple. People will pay to see a monkey dance. I would pay, I I would pay money to shoot an apple 300 you, yards i would just let I me mean, you do realize that you, if you're on the water like i'm gonna try to find the skier that's out there and i'm just gonna be like yeah, it's like it's, top golf with the guy all, with this <laughs> running around trying to pick up the balls it's top golf but with an apple cannon it's called skier. it's called a potato gun and you just put an apple in it 
Hey, like, they didn't revolutionize what, anything. Put whatever vegetation or produce you want to in this thing. And just as long as it makes me $50,000, I mean, I'm good. This thing's spitting out green. That's what I know it's spitting out. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we, we got to jump into the inner circle. We got to have a conversation with those members. If you're not a member of the inner circle and you want to be, you can go to wealthwallstreet.com forward slash inner circle each week, two times a week. We have live Q&A, just like we're getting ready to do to help you get to your financial freedom destination. And you can be in community with others who are on that same journey. So thank you as always for watching or listening. However, you're, you're capturing this podcast today. We're always grateful for you. Have an amazing day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.